In echocardiography, mitral valve area can be estimated by several methods. Most commonly we use the planimetry, cross section can be planimetered in short axis view. That is the first method usually employed. Then this pressure half time is the next commonly employed using Doppler echocardiography. Sometimes proximal isovelocity surface area that is this surface area here can be calculated by PISA method and metal valve area can be calculated. That is a cumbersome method. So most commonly used are mitral valve area planimetry and mitral valve area by pressure half time. This is uh, simple and can be measured even if we are not getting a good cross section by 2D echo. This is measured in the apical four chamber view. You align the cursor along the good mitral jet and get a good Doppler tracing like this. And uh, all you have to do is mark the slope that is from the peak of the E wave. This is the mitral E wave and this is the atrial systolic A wave. Just mark the slope and machine will calculate it. You know that in mitral stenosis when the gradient is continuous there is no diastasis and these two waves are rather fusing here. Without mitral stenosis these two E and A waves will be independent waves with a nearly horizontal baseline in between. That is not there in mitral stenosis because of stenosis there is continuous gradient between left atrium and left ventricle. That's what you are seeing here. So here the measured pressure half time is 163 milliseconds and the corresponding mitral valve area calculated by the machine is 1.3 square centimeter. Pressure half time of 220 milliseconds will correspond to 1 square centimeter of mitral valve area. If you divide 220 by the observed pressure half time, you get the mitral valve area. And uh, we know that uh, pressure is equal to 4 V squared by Bernoulli or modified Bernoulli equation. So the corresponding velocity will be related to the square root of the peak pressure. This is measurement of uh, mean gradient by tracing the envelope of 